38. It says, And he said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the great and foremost commandment. From this verse, we learn that in order to love God, we need to love God, but, you, but we cannot love God until we experience Jesus in our hearts. Only Jesus can change our heart and our capacity to love others can only grow if we have Jesus as well. Everything about our life is for God's pleasure, purpose, and His glory. Be confident that God is on your side all the time. So let us remember that as we pray, there is somebody who hears us and intercedes for us. So when we pray, it's not just us who pray, but Jesus prays, prays with us, right? As you remember in the book of Hebrews. So today, um, grab a partner. Let's pray together for our church. Let's pray for the service today. And let's pray for those who are still on their way. First, let's pray for the vision of CCF New Zealand, that each family would be a discipleship group, that we will continue to grow knowing Jesus and loving and living obedient lives. And let's, have, let's pray that we will have regular family devotions and also pray for small groups to be formed in other key cities like Rotorua, Queenstown, Napier, Dunedin, and all over New Zealand. Let us pray. So let us pray for our next gen school children that they will know God personally even at their young age and even for our singles and elevate youth members that they will impact their peers because of the Christ because of their Christ like living let us also lift up our young people that they will be used by God to reach out to people of different cultures nationalities and backgrounds let's pray
lastly, let us lift up our church leaders and, ch and servants. We pray for passion to serve, purity of heart, personal revival, and a growing love for the Lord for all our new CCF New Zealand leaders, servants, and volunteers. We pray especially for good health, for protection, divine wisdom, humility, joy in serving, and faithful stewardship for all our leadership. Let us, let us lift them all in prayer. close in prayer our most loving and precious Lord we thank you Father God for this afternoon Lord we know that we, it's not an accident that you have brought us here Father God and Lord as we start our service this afternoon we pray Father that you would prepare our hearts open our minds Lord and speak to us today Lord God we pray that you would prepare our hearts Father God so that it would be fertile soil for your word oh God help us Lord Jesus to, to um, get rid of any distractions in our minds, Father God, and even around us, Lord, that we can focus in serving you and worshiping you today, Lord. We pray, Father God, that you, you will allow, oh, Father God, those who are on their way still, Lord God, to have the best, um, uh, to have a safe journey, Father God, to this church. We pray, Lord God, for every aspect, Father God, of the worship service this afternoon, from the tech to the volunteers, even, Lord, the next gen, for the next gen downstairs, even also, Lord God, for our first timers oh father god we just ask lord jesus that you allow all things lord to fall into place father god that your name would be honored and be glorified in everything that we do and say this afternoon lord we ask father god that you, prepare, you would bless the message this afternoon and that you will allow us oh lord god a fresh encounter with you jesus we ask for your holy spirit lord to speak to us to dwell in our hearts and be sensitive to your leading and message this afternoon lord we pray that you would protect our leaders here in CCF New Zealand, Lord. That you, Father God, would be the center of their lives. That their testimonies, O oh Lord God, will point others towards you, Lord Jesus. We pray for Pastor Ryan and his family, Lord, Adele and the kids, Lord Jesus. That you would be with them always, Lord God, as they continue to serve you. And also, Lord, we pray that you would bless the COS as well, Father God. That you would protect their families, Lord, and that you would provide for their every need. We commit to you this afternoon, Lord Jesus, and we pray, Lord, that you would be the center of everything that we do. We glorify your name, Lord. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Good afternoon. Yes. A blessed Sunday, everyone. Welcome, everyone, brothers and sisters in Christ. It's always good to see you in this house of worship. Let us pray ourselves. Let us lift our hands to the Lord, our King of Kings. Amen. There's a light that shines with hope and grace for the sky. With your mercy each day we're alive. Let your glory pour out, Jesus. There's a joy that overwhelms our souls, cause we know our God is in control, overflow. Let your people pour out,
for me oh god lord we praise you lord what a great time to worship you lord in one family of god lord we welcome your holy presence in this place oh god we just want to surrender our hearts to you lord right now we just want to rest in your presence in your peace in your love and on your love we are crying unto you lord Praising your name, O oh God, in this place. Lord, we just want to help us to forget whatever is bothering in our minds right now. Help us, Lord, to focus on you alone, Lord. For your love. For your love alone. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son whosoever believes will not perish they shall have eternal life I shall hold to the cross to God alone for his love 
Promises, oh God. We continue to worship you, Lord, right now, oh God. What a great time of worship, Lord, in this church, in this hall, oh God, Lord. Strengthening us, oh Lord, and reminding us, Lord, how you love us, oh God. We offer everything to you, Lord, right now, oh God. We worship you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. We glorify your name, only your name be magnified. We offer everything to you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord, we lift your name, O oh God, Lord. A thousand generations. Falling down in worship to sing the song of ages to the Lamb. And all who 
God before us and all who will believe will sing the song of ages to the Lamb. Your name is the highest, your name is the greatest, your name stands above them all. All thrones and dominions of powers and positions, your name stands above them all.
Father God, we just worship you today. Here we are standing, Lord, exalting your name, praising you in the highest places. Lord, you deserve it, for you are the God who can no one equal, Lord. You are the greatest. You are the highest. There is no kingdom like your kingdom, and there is no love like your love. Lord, today we can just focus on you because of everything you've done. But we worship you not because of what you've done, but because of who you are. The King of kings and the Lord of lords, the God of gods. We just want to focus on you today and may our worship be something that is pleasing to you, something that would honor you, something that would exalt your name throughout the earth, throughout the world. And may they hear our shouts and praises because you, Lord God, are really great. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. God, okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Come now sit down. Thank you, music team. And yes, it's another Sunday for us to worship God in unison. It's really great to see people coming here. You know, you are here to encourage someone. It's always a privilege to be with God's people. Okay, and if it's actually your first time to come here in CCF Auckland North Shore, we would like to see you. It, it's always our tradition. Well, of course, we want to, to, to know you a little bit more and, of course, to welcome you properly and to pray for you if you want, that is. Okay, if it's your first time, can you please stand up so we can see you? Anyone? Right, yes, thank you. Wow. Yeah, welcome. Welcome to CCF. Now we have a little bit, a gift of token for you, and we, we pray and hope that that would help you in your pursuit of Jesus. Now we may... I, I would like to actually ask everyone to stand up and welcome somebody you have not seen for a while. Okay, that was a really a very warm welcome together with the warm weather outside. And by the way, if it's your first time coming here, we would like to have a little chat with you to have a catch up on our welcome hub. So after the service, uh, we would like to meet you and pray for you on that side of the building. So, okay. Okay, now for those who are celebrating their wedding anniversary on the month of April, we would like to actually recognize you so that we can rejoice with you. So anybody having or celebrating their anniversary on the month of April. Yes, TJ. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Wow. Praise God for you. Wow. Okay. Welcome. Welcome. Uh, happy, happy anniversary. And we pray that you would actually invite us in your celebrations as well. Well, congratulations for having another year. Every year, that's one year at a time. And of course, God is so gracious for us to still be together. And I heard some people are married about 40 years or so. Wow, praise God. And for those who are still young, well, we actually trust God that he would sustain you through the years. Yeah. Yeah. Married life is tough. But we, our God is tougher. Yes, praise God. Okay, one of our CCF um, visions here in CCF New Zealand is actually disciples in every family. We would like each family to, especially the father, the parents to be discipling their children and the father to be discipling his wife, of course. And we would like to have a family that would be pursuing Jesus as they disciple, well, uh, as discipleship is happening all throughout. And we pray, it's our prayer that we actually change the world one family at a time. You see, 
a generation of changes could happen starting with our children. Yeah? And if, if we focus on the family, just our family, that should be good enough to last for 100 years if we do it right. Of course, you pass it on to the people around you and to the next generation that's coming. That's why we always say the children are our future. Exactly. Especially the young ones. And yes, it's a good segue for an Elevate event. Yeah, who are the Elevate team here? <laughs> elevate? Yes, that's what I like. I like that sound effects. You see, we, we have an Elevate event. It's back again. And uh, the theme is completely forgiven. They, have, they are going through this completely his series. And this time around, it's going to be a completely forgiven topic. So it's going to be on Saturday, 20th of April. So it's in 6F Auckland North at 8 p.m. to 8.30. So save the date. Also, there's another one uh, on Auckland South. It's going to be on the 27th. And that's going to be at the Salvation Army in Mount Wellington. For details, so it's going to be from 6 p.m. to 6.30. For details, you can... Contact, uh, you can go to the Welcome Hub for us to give you uh, the exact address of those. Of course, you know this place already. For South, that's uh, going to be yeah in Sal Salvation Army in Wellington. Okay. Uh, yes, a valuable fellowship. So there's going to be a sports event for us. So if you're fun of playing volleyball, this is your opportunity to actually, you know, show your skills and at the same time meet people whom you would be able to interact with, and it's an opportunity for you to just enjoy, you know. Um, it's going to be on April 28th, uh, Sunday, 5 to 7, so get your sports gears for you to, uh, oh, well, of course, to play volleyball. It's going to be at the gym downstairs, and invite your friends. Who knows? Those friends of yours would be someone who would inspire you, or you would be inspiring them the other way around. Awesome. Okay, some more. We have also our monthly intercede. So usually each month we actually have our monthly intercede. You know, a lot of leaders come here on this monthly intercede session, but we would like to invite the whole church. We want to be a prayerful church, as you probably already seen that all around us, there's just so many evil happening. And this is really a good way for us to pray for our leaders you know, for the leaders around the world, for our church as well, and for the many things that we do, that we do it for God alone and not for our own motives. Okay, it's going to be on the 30th of April, 7.30 to 8.30, just an hour. And it's a couple of percentage of your time, so please come. It's going to be online as well, so you don't have to ride your car, you don't have to spend for petrol, so you just have to spend for electricity and your internet which is, uh, you pay it anyway. Okay, awesome. Okay, one more. It's, uh, wow, the CCF Auckland South anniversary is coming. It's their fourth. They are now four years old and completely for him. So that's the theme for this year. And it's going to be on May 5, 2024 at 63 Mackenzie Road. If you know what that is, um, yeah, you can, you can look at it in Google and it would lead you to that place. Okay, it's a... Uh, Good place. It's where we worship God as well. So invite your friends again. It's going to be a happy anniversary for our friends down south in uh, Auckland. That is. Okay. Yes. Uh, we have one more. Your heart-to-heart -heart parenting. Wow. Who here are our parents? Can you please raise your hands? Yeah. Wow. A lot of you. Yeah. This is going to be an opportunity for us to really learn. There's no such thing as parenting 101. And uh, our church actually wants to focus on the family and have ourselves, you know, catering to each other, especially to our young ones, our children, our hope, our future, to help us grow. So it help each other grow in a way wherein we, we honor God. So it's uh, on the 11th of May, 2024, of course, 1 to 6 p.m. And it's going to be an MPHS. I've been looking at what that means. Uh, I'm guessing it's uh, miles per hour, but evidently not. It's probably Ministry of Public Health. But there's an S, so I don't really know. Anyway, it's at MPHS Hub West, 27 Corbin Avenue. If you want to attend that, please block that date because it's going to be really an inspiring speaker as we, our own Pastor Ryan and Leigh would be speaking 
from experience. So it's going to be a good uh, learning session for us as well as, you know, it's always an opportunity to share your learnings as well. Praise God. So you can have that uh, QR code if you're interested, and please register as soon as possible. Okay. Awesome. Because it's RSVP. So if you don't reserve, you won't have any seat. You can go there standing. Still good. Okay. Next. And uh, your CCF donations are now available. So uh, you will be receiving email soon. And if you're donated to the church, you will actually get one third of that back. Praise God for the government of New Zealand, right? They're so generous. You give something and they give you something back. And what if you, you get something back? So you give something bigger so that you'll get something bigger as well. Uh, it's coming your way. Wait for those emails. And if you don't receive your email, just uh, go to the Welcome Hub and uh, just contact me. <laughs> Talk to me. And uh, we can arrange that. The, probably we got your email wrong. So, yes, in this month, you will have your IRD certificates with you with your full name on it. Okay, and I think our favorite, this is very short, so we are sure to actually block the screen. But even if it's short, we'll make it easy. Okay, how will we make it easy? So we'll divide it from this row, this row, this row. Yeah, easy. So... First row on my right would say we love. Can you say we love? And the uh, middle one because. Oh no, because. How will I divide this? <laughs> because he first. Doesn't make sense though. We love because he first loved us. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Let Let's try to make sense out of it. Okay. Let's try it. We love, we love. because he first loved us. Okay, for the reference, we're going to divide. I'm going to make it hard for the middle one. <laughs> no, no. Uh, first John, 4, 19. Okay, got it? Awesome. Okay, let's turn off the screen. It's just a little bit of practice. This would be awesome, I think. Okay, let's start with the reference first. Awesome. Okay. Praise God. Yeah. Give yourself a pat on the back. You really did good. Okay. Let's pray. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for you're always good. No matter what happens in the world, you're still in control and you're still on the throne. Lord, we praise you because this is another day for us to really focus on your word, to, be, to hear your word. Lord, it be, may it be something that would change us. Lord, we pray that we will leave this building transform and change, Lord, in our hearts. Lord, it's always a way for us to honor you by applying the things we learn. Lord, we would also like to pray for our finances. Lord, we know that you are the one who gives us success, the one who gives us ability to work, Lord, the strength to do it, the health to have for us to, to do what we need to do. Lord, we, we just want to offer everything that we do and a little bit of what we get, we would like to give to you because it's yours anyway. Lord, and we give it from our heart, not under compulsion, but because we want to just be cheerful in giving and we rejoice in doing that too because we know that it's for you. Lord, we pray for also our next gen, Lord God, and we pray for the children that even in their young minds, they will be able to really grasp what they are taught. We pray for the teachers that they would apply patience and that they would be models of your goodness. Lord, we pray that as they learn, they'll be able to also influence their peers in their young age and that as they grow, they would influence the world around them. Lord, we pray lastly for the message that whatever we hear, Lord God, may it be retained in our hearts. Lord, help us that we would be able to understand it through your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, today is going to be a video message, and it is still in the series of? Yes, Love Rediscovered. We're still in the topic of love, and it's going to be for the following weeks as well. Okay, so let's watch this. And, okay, just a reminder, we, we imagine that the speaker would be standing as if he's standing live. 
okay? If we ask you to stand up or maybe ask your seatmate or do something else, we participate. That good? Awesome, let's do that. Okay, let's hear this message. and I celebrated our 21st anniversary last January 4. And, you know, we first met in high school. And um, I didn't date her in high school, but I, she ended up going to Canada for studies. I stayed here. And then she came back, and then she was here for a year after we had graduated, and our friendship had uh, rekindled. We reconnected, and we were both interested in each other. And then she went to the States. So we did a long-distance relationship for some time. And if you look at the map, I'm here in Manila, and Jenny was in Seattle, so about 10,000 kilometers. So we wrote a lot of emails, letters, and I want to read to you um, one, of the in, you know, one of the excerpts from something that I had. It goes like this. There goes my heart beating, because you are the reason. I'm losing my sleep. Please come back now. And there goes my mind racing. And you are the reason that I'm still breathing. I'm hopeless now. I climb every mountain and swim every ocean just to be with you. I wish I wrote that. <laughs> but there was a concert last night which she watched. I didn't get to watch it. But one of the singers, Caleb, Sc uh, Caleb Scott, wrote that song or sang that song. Our world is obsessed with love, would you say? We love love, yes? Why is that? There's so many songs written about love. People are falling in love. They're falling out of love. It's because you and I were created in God's image. And God, God is a God of love. So we were made to love. But I praise God that we have been going through this series. Because if you went to the internet and you asked the internet, what is love? you would find 11,700,000 possibilities of what love is. But you and I have been going through the series called Love Rediscovered. Yes? So in your own definition now, what is the first thing that comes to your mind when somebody would ask you, what is love? So please tell your neighbor, what is love? In your own definition, from your own understanding. Guys, I should hear you talking. It's okay to talk in church today. Please talk. What is love in your own words? <laughs> love is my husband, though. Grabe. <laughs> you know, if you could now trim it down to one word, what is love? One word. God. We just read about that, right? Amazing. God is love. We have looked at Jesus, and Jesus said, let us be known by love, right? He says, by this all men will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. He says, love as I have loved you. We looked at the Apostle Paul. He said, love is action. We looked at James. We learned we need to love radically. We looked at Peter last week, and we learned to love fervently. So this week, today, what are we going to learn from John. Well, I submit to you, if you look at the passage we just read, you will find that the word love is mentioned 27 times. And all those times it's mentioned, it's not phileo love, it's not eros love, it's not storge love, it's agape love. What is agape love? It is the highest form of love. Maybe some of you told your seatmate, love is an unconditional commitment towards an imperfect person. You remember that definition? To seek their highest good, which often requires sacrifice. That's a wonderful definition. That's agape love, unconditional. Say this with me. Selfless, sacrificial love. That's agape love. Selfless, sacrificial love. And it says it's unconditional. And that is mentioned 27 times in that passage. The next word that's mentioned most is the word God, 21 times. 
in that passage. And then after God, the word abide. Say this with me, meno. Meno, that is the Greek word for the word abide. And what does it mean? It means to stay in a given place, state, relation, or expectancy. It also means to continue, to dwell, to endure, to be present, to remain, to stand, and to tarry. So if you want to remember what the message is for today, it's this. We put those words together. Love is abiding in God. God is love, which is what we read. We can't love if we don't abide in God. We're going to look at what is the source of love. That's the what. And then the so what. What's the so what? We'll show God's love. And then we're going to look how can we show God's love. We need to stay in God's love. What's our memory verse? Say it with me. We love because he first loved us. 1 John chapter 4, verse 19. And everything kind of revolves around that. We're going to see where love is from. And as you experience love, God calls us to love others. Let's ask God to speak to us again. Heavenly Father, thank you for this amazing time of worship. You are a God that deserves all our worship. And we thank you that we can come together and worship you freely. I thank you for all those that are listening online, that are worshiping you online, right, either right now or on demand. Heavenly Father, you know how easy it is for us to get distracted. So we ask in Jesus' name, Holy Spirit, you be the one to keep our minds and our hearts. Raise your sharp focus on you, Jesus. Holy Spirit, may you be the one to speak to us. That it would be your message, it's your words that would not just encourage us, but transform us. So we pray against any distraction. And we thank you, Jesus, that you're here with us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So if you look at verse 7 and verse 12, uh, verse 21, which is the bookends of what we just read, it gives us the application of today's message. What's the application? Love one another, right? We love because he first loved us. Let's read verse 7. Read it with me. Beloved, let us love one another. Now jump to verse 21, the one I highlighted. The one who loves... God should love his brother also. You see, love is not just theoretical. Love is something that can be experienced. It's tangible. It can be seen. I tell my wife almost every day that I love her. Right, baby? I'm telling you now, I love you. I would climb every mountain. But even though I tell her that I love her, does she feel loved every day? No. And that drives me nuts. Because in my heart and in my mind, I love you. I told you I love you. Why can't you feel that I love you? Because love is more than just words. So we've been married for 21 years. And I am meditating on this, on this passage because I have such a long way to go when it comes to love. I struggle with this. I have, I have so much to grow in. And in our house, when you come into our house, there's a stairway that goes up to the second floor. And that stairway becomes a place where we drop everything. Our groceries, if I have my bag from work, I leave it there. If I have stuff, I leave it there. And most of the time, uh, I bring up, well, to be honest, I don't actually always bring up my stuff. I would just leave it there and I go upstairs. And eventually, my wife, she brings it up. So as I'm thinking about this message, I'm like, what can I do to actually help my wife feel that she's loved? So a very simple thing came to my mind. Why don't you just bring that stuff up? So one day I, I get my stuff, but more than my stuff, I get her bag and bring it up and whatever else is there and I bring it upstairs. And she all of a sudden says, wow, thank you for doing that. I'm like, wow, maybe she's starting to feel loved. And you know, we're getting older, yes? We all are, by the way. Um, when I look at the mirror, sometimes I don't feel like I'm getting older until I'll see like a, a funny angle where I'll see the top of my head. And I'm like, shoot, I'm getting older because I'm running out of hair. But my wife, um, a couple weeks ago, she said, you know what? Well, even last year, she said, my eyes, I just can't, I can't read things when they're near. 
And, you know, of course, I can still read things, but she, she was really having a hard time reading things near her, near her eyes. So we had a physical checkup, and there was some test that was done on a machine, and the results came out, and there was some cause of alarm. Like she was concerned about something. So God's amazing divine appointments, we looked for a doctor. Um, randomly, you know, we, we found a doctor, set up an appointment, but the doctor's assistant said, we're going to put some drops in your eye, and you're, it's going to be blurry for a couple hours, and you're not going to really be able to drive. So my wife was telling me this. In the past, I would have just been like, eh, okay, take a driver, you'll be fine. Because I wasn't, I wasn't always present when, when she would do her doctor's checkup when she had uh, four of our kids. A bad husband. But because I'm thinking about this message, meditating on it, you know, I said, oh, no, I'll go with you tomorrow. That was a Monday. I'm like, I will go with you to the doctor. So I went with her, went to the doctor. You know, the doctor that we met turns out to be a Christian. She's actually from CCF. We didn't even know. We prayed together. She encouraged us. And we were just so blessed that we had this doctor. She looked at all the, the scans. She had a rescan done. Long story short, my wife's eyes it's just, we're just getting older. So praise God, it's okay. There's no, like, no, nothing serious there. That was a Monday. On Tuesday, we had our discipleship group meeting. And so we separated guys with the guys, girls with the girls. And after our, our time together, some girls came in and they're like, wow, you know, good job. I'm like, good job for what? Your wife, she told us. You went with her to the doctor. I'm like, oh, yeah. She felt really loved. I'm like, oh, why is it so hard for me to love? Love is something that, you can, that can be seen, it can be felt. It's because I'm selfish. And that's why I need this message. I need to know what is the source of God's love. What is the source of love? How can I actually love this way? And that's what we're going to look at. We're going to look at what John, through Scripture, inspired God's word to us today. Beloved, let's look at verse 7. Beloved, let us what? Love one another, for love is from God. So from this passage, we learn that love is from who? True love is from God. We also learn everyone who loves is, read with me, born of God and knows God. Again, Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. So this begs to ask the question, is it if we don't love, I want you to follow me, the logic, okay? If we don't love, are we then not born of God and not know God? Or another way to put it, if we refuse to love, are we really born of God? Do we really know God? You know, in the book of John, this, this, this letter that he wrote. There's two tests of Christians or a follower of Jesus. One, does this person, does this, this, this person that you're testing believe in Jesus? And if I were to ask you, how many of you believe in Jesus? I would say 90% of you would raise your hands, right? First test, you believe in Jesus. You know what the second test is? Do you love? Do you love? Do you and I love like Jesus? And he answers the question. He says, the one who does not love does not know God. I'm not here to make you doubt whether you're saved or not. By the end of this message, you're going to have confidence in where you stand before Christ. It's an amazing passage. But you and I do have to ask ourselves, if I find myself unwilling to forgive... Unwilling to love, do I really know God? Am I born of God? It says, the one who does not love does not know God. For, now say this with me, God is love. Again, God is love. For me, one of the most profound phrases in the entire Bible, God is love. What does that mean? Who wrote the, the letter of John? John. 
Did he write another book? He wrote the Gospel of John. So to understand this, we now jump to John chapter 17. And this is Jesus' prayer. And John is recording what Jesus said. John 17, 24. Father, I desire that they also, whom you have given me, be with me where I am, so that they may see my glory, which you have given me. Now together, let's read the one in yellow. For you love me before the foundation of the world. Wow. You loved me before the foundation of the world. God is love. God exists for all eternity. Which means, before the foundation of the world, there was already love. God and love have existed for all eternity. Why is that? Because the relationship between God the Father and God the Son and God the Holy Spirit is one that is defined by love. They are in perfect love with one another. So God didn't create you or create me because he needed people to love him. God was completely, fully complete with God the Father, God the Son, God the Spirit. So he created us out of his love for us. Right? That's why when he created light, it is good. He created land, water, it is good. He created the, the sky, the stars, the moon, it is good. God, in his love, created a beautiful world. He created animals. It is good. And then he created you and I, men and women, in his image. And he said, it is very good. You know why you and I have such a longing for love? It's because we were created in God's image. God is not just, it's not just one of his character traits. His essence is love. That's what the verse is saying. God is love. Amazing. By this, the love of God was manifested in us. Remember, love is something that can be seen. It's tangible. You can see it. You can, you can witness it. How did God manifest his love for you and for me? God has sent his only begotten son into the world. So that we might live through him. What is he saying? God revealed and proved his love through who? Through Jesus. What is the source of love? In this is love. Not that we love God. So love is not from us. It is not defined by us. It doesn't begin with us. Love is from who? Love is from God. Love is God and love is from God. He shows us what love is. It, he manifested it in Jesus. Why? Who is Jesus? And what did he do? The next verse tells us. Read it with me. But that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. What does that word mean? Propitiation. What does it mean that Jesus is the propitiation for our sins? The word propitiation means to appease. To appease who? To appease what? You know, God is love. God is also holy. He is holy. He is righteous. So God has a righteous indignation towards evil. Remember what God created? Good, 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 very good. What happened when you and I rebelled against God? Sin came into the world. And we see the impact and the effect of sin today, yes? Our world's in chaos. That's what sin does. That's what evil does. Maybe you and I don't see sin the same way because we watch sin, we laugh about sin. But in God's eyes, because he is so holy... He will not tolerate sin. There is a righteous wrath against evil. And I praise God for that. Because then I know that one day he will make all things right. He is a just God. It is his patience 
He is patient with us. So how do you reconcile? God is love on one hand, but then God being holy, being just, having this righteous indignation. Me as a sinner, and the Bible says all of us have sinned, can, can never approach God, right? I am estranged from God because of my sin. And God, being a holy God, is estranged from me too because he is righteous. So how? What happened? That's what propitiation means. It's the technical word, word where you have the holiness of God and the love of God. Who was the one who took the wrath of God upon himself? God himself. God didn't show us grace because Jesus died on the cross. God is gracious. God is loving. And that's why Jesus died on the cross. That's why he made a way for us to have a relationship with him. It's unbelievable. It blows my mind. No human could have created that concept. Only God himself. Because God is holy and God is loving at the same time. And on the cross, you have the amazing work of Jesus Christ to reconcile us together. I want you now to imagine you're Barabbas. You remember Barabbas? Who was Barabbas? 2,000 years ago. You're Barabbas. Barabbas was the criminal whose sentence was crucifixion. He deserved to go to the cross. But here comes Jesus. And all of a sudden, all the Jews are saying, crucify him, crucify him. And so, Pilate lets Barabbas go. And who becomes the one who's nailed on the cross? Jesus. Jesus took Barabbas' place. I wonder... If you were Barabbas, would you go to that cross and look and see, I should have been there, but Jesus took my place. 2,000 years later, it's no different. Until God's Spirit reveals to you and me the ugliness of our sinful heart. We won't really care about the story of the cross. But when you see the reality that I am a sinner. That should have been me. Oh, the amazing love of God. We sang about it. He paid the debt. He took our place. That is how God's love was manifested. That's what propitiation means. Thank you, Jesus, for dying on the cross on my behalf. What's the message today? Love is abiding in God. Who is the source of love? God is. We now look at, so what? So what? We love because he first loved us. You have been loved completely by God. And now God calls us to love others. Look, verse 11. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. Our memory verse. Say this with me. We love because he first loved us. Now I want you to close your eyes. Everybody close your eyes. Now repeat after me. 1 John 4, 19. We love because he first loved us. Now you say it on your own. With your eyes closed. 1 John 4, 19. Okay, hey, open your eyes. That's our memory verse. We love because he first loved us. The message is for us to be able to love this way that God loves us, we need to abide in him. We need to experience it. Then we can give it. No one has seen God, verse 12 says, no one. If we love one another, God abides in us. And his love is perfected in us. So no one has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God abides in us. You see, God may not be visibly seen, but his love and presence is felt through who? Through us. I love what Colin Smith said. He's a Scottish preacher. He said, 
God's love comes to you, and it comes how? Through you. Again, God's love comes to you, and it comes through you. See, we were never meant to just keep God's love to ourselves. And he talks about a love being perfected. It's perfected when we allow the love of God to come to us and allow it to come through us. That word perfected doesn't mean flawless. It means completed. God's love is completed when you receive it and then you love others with it. Look, no one has seen God at any time. If we love one another, right, if we love, an love, love one another, God abides in us and his love is perfected in us. When is his love perfected in us? If we love one another. If you are born of God, you will love God. You will love others. Uh, we're so blessed to have Khalil and Doreen. Let's welcome them. They're going to share their testimony with us. Let's welcome Khalil and Doreen. In 2002, Khalil and I got married. We were blessed with two wonderful daughters. We were a small, young, and happy family. But slowly, flaws in our lives began to manifest and started to affect our marriage. I was not a submissive wife. I always thought that my ideas were better than his. I was also focused on my career, and as a result, rose through the corporate ladder quickly, which required me to always work long hours. I was simply not fulfilling my role as a wife and mother. I was not taking care of my wife and was so full of pride. In my mind, she could handle herself. It looked like she did not need my help anyway. I thought we were do doing just fine, but eventually, I got tired of all the things that were happening in my life, and worst of all, I felt that Doreen did not care for me anymore. I thought I deserved so much more than what I was getting out of our marriage. I started going out drinking and partying with coworkers and friends, thinking that that was the way to relieve me of my stress. I sought comfort from anyone, and the next thing I knew, I was in an adulterous relationship. I spent less and less time in the house and more time at work and with the other woman. I was unrepentant, believing that I deserved to be happy. I became less involved with our children, almost to the point of abandoning my family. I was drunk almost every night. I got so angry when I found out Khalil was having an affair. I felt so betrayed and deceived. I wanted to take our daughters and leave him. But this did not happen because my mother and mother-in-law stood in the gap for us, telling me to hang on and not leave him. My father and father-in-law were also praying hard for us. I grudgingly obeyed our parents. Months later, in the Holy Week of 2012, I had no choice but to stay home because there was no other place where I could go. Our older daughter stayed in my room all day, talking and playing with me. That was the first time I came to my senses about what I had done to my family. Eventually, I asked Doreen that we reconcile for the sake of our children. But there was still no repentance on my part, and I never really changed my ways. I still went out drinking, and worse, I was still involved with the other woman. And I still harbored anger and bitterness against Doreen. This went on for another few months. I thought we were doing fine already, but I got furiously angry at Khalil when I found out that the affair was still ongoing. That was a significant turning point for me. I spent the whole night asking myself, why was I doing these things to hurt my wife and children? It was then that I repented and prayed to God for forgiveness. The next day, I sent a text message to Doreen, begging her to forgive me, telling her that I loved her, and I will completely cut off ties with the other woman, and so I did. It was the start of working towards real reconciliation. Not long after, we decided to intentionally attend the CCF worship services as a family 
and really learn about God's Word. Each Sunday, it seemed that the Lord was speaking to me directly, dealing with my pride and my sense of entitlement. God started to convict me and slowly worked in my life. And experiencing His unfailing love towards me, a wretched sinner, prompted me to truly repent and surrender to God fully. The Lord was also slowly healing my wounds and hurts, the more I listened to His Word every Sunday. I felt God embracing me and filling me with His love. Eventually, we both felt that we needed to grow deeper in our spiritual lives, so we decided to join a discipleship group. The topic of our first meeting was about God's great love for us, sacrificing His Son to die for our sins, and that we need to repent and surrender our lives to Him, asking Jesus to become the Lord and Savior of our lives. That topic was not new to us at all. But somehow, Doreen and I were crying in the car on the way home after our first D-group meeting. We reaffirmed our allegiance to Christ that day and made Him the Lord of our lives once again. It was in the D-group where I realized that I was a sinner saved by grace. Who was I not to give mercy and love when I myself have been a recipient of God's love? Who was I to be unforgiving when I myself was forgiven by Jesus Christ for all the things I have done wrong against Him? When God made me realize His mercy, forgiveness, and love to me, I felt God's peace and fully forgave my husband. I also asked for His forgiveness for disrespecting Him and not taking care of Him. I also fully forgave Doreen, but the love and forgiveness in our family did not stop there. When our older daughter arrived home after attending an Elevate True Life retreat, she excitedly told us how God had moved in her life. Then she paused, and in tears, she said, Dad, I'd like to tell you that I completely forgive you. I was floored by what she said and responded while crying, Thank you so much, anak. Our relationship has been restored and rebuilt beyond our imagination. We were able to attend a true life retreat and decided to be baptized to publicly declare our faith in Jesus Christ. In God's perfect time, the baptism also happened on the day of our 13th wedding anniversary. Praise God. Praise God. Eventually, God impressed upon my heart to give up my job and become a full-time wife and mother so I can take care of my family the best I can. We are amazed by God's love for us that not only has He mended our relationship so well, He has even called us to serve together again in ministry. I serve in Exalt, our worship ministry, while Doreen serves in live production. Together, Doreen and I disciple our children Kiana and Belay, and we also lead a D group where we share the love of Christ with one another. And now we are here sharing you God's story of love and forgiveness in our lives. We could not have done this on our own. This is only by God's love, and so we give Him all glory and praise. Praise God. I want to call up uh, Ariel and Maribel Karandang. They are the disciples of Khalil and Doreen. Were you guys blessed? Guys, this is the main ministry of CTF. It's called discipleship in a small group. How do you get a big church and help people grow in Christ-likeness? The word discipleship means just helping each other grow in Christ-likeness. It's like this in a small group. I praise God for you, Ariel and Maribel for how you've invested and poured your life into Khalil and Doreen. And we want to pray for them. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you so much for Ariel and Mary Bell, for the love that they have experienced from you. And because you have loved them, Lord, they give of themselves freely and completely your love for Khalil and Doreen. And thank you for using that D group to help Khalil and Doreen to be able to heal completely and reconcile, to understand that we are all sinners saved by grace. And it is only your amazing love that enables us to make difficult choices like to forgive and to continue to love. 
So I thank you for the obedience of Doreen and Khalil to continue to love each other. And so, Lord, as you have used them mightily to encourage and bless all of us, we pray now for their protection. You protect them against the attacks of Satan. We pray that you would protect their children. Continue to bless them, Lord, in their work, in their ministry, as D-group leaders. And even as they serve you um, in this church, in the different capacity that you've given them. And may you bless their entire family, Jesus, their children. That they would all grow to love you and really live for you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Praise God for you guys. Guys, you know, Doreen, if you see her, she's actually wearing a headset today. Because she is volunteering as live production. She has her own work. She's not paid by CCF, but she volunteers out of just the joy and the love of serving God. Let's praise God for this couple. You know, when it says that God's love is perfected in us, you saw an example of how difficult marriage can be, how difficult relationships can be. But when you choose to love and let God's spirit love through you, it's so powerful. You don't have to be old. We were with our D group family last week. We were out having fun in the water. And I saw an act of love. It was amazing for me. Five kids were on a flying fish. And to make the long story short, it was the adult's fault that the flying fish started going underwater. So because the flying fish started going underwater, these five kids didn't have life vests. We were just having fun and maybe not thinking clearly. One of them falls off. And I was watching. There was one kid that looked back and saw it was his cousin that fell off. And so he let go of the flying fish. Well, he let go. I was already jumping in the water. So I, I swam with him. The father came and swam. But this young boy, 11 years old, selfless, sacrificial love, jumped into the water to help his cousin. His cousin can swim. But he just wanted to make sure his cousin's going to be okay. You don't have to be old. You don't have to be married. There are so many people that need love around you. Will you allow the love of God to flow to you and flow through you? What's the message? Love is abiding in God. We looked at the source of love, which is God. We looked at why we should show God's love, because we were first loved. Now we're going to look at well, how can I actually do this? You need to stay or to abide in God, in God's love. Where do we see that? Look at the verse. By this we know that we abide in him and he in us because he has given us of his spirit. God wants you to have the assurance that you are in him. What is the assurance? As you love people, as you abide in him, you abide in love. He's given you his spirit. The Holy Spirit is the assurance of God's invisible presence in us. And he empowers us to love. Amen? That's why it's so important. You want to love this way? We need to abide in God. We have come to know and have believed the love which God has for us. God is love. Read this with me. And the one who abides in love abides in God. And God abides in him. By this, love is perfected with us. What is this? Anyone, what is this? Perfume? Cologne? Why do we put this on? Why? We smell good. Or love, yeah. If you love your wife, you'll put cologne, right? Because sometimes, many times, I don't smell very nice, right? <laughs> That's why I take a shower and put cologne on. We all have a fragrance, yes? Some have nice fragrance, some not so nice. If it's not so nice, do your part, make it nice. Now if God were to have a fragrance, what would that fragrance be? A four letter word, L-O-V-E. You wanna know if God is present in a group of people? is their love. It's tangible. You can see it. You can feel it. 
God has called us to love others, to abide in him. It means you allow him to show his love to others. There is a fragrance. By this, love is perfected with us so that we may have confidence in the day of judgment. Because as he is, so also are we in this world. What is he talking about here? Do you know Jesus talked about hell more than anyone else in the New Testament? And if you believe in Jesus and Jesus talks about hell, there really is a place called hell. That's why many people are afraid. They don't have confidence. But you and I have just seen that Jesus, if you are in Jesus, if you are abiding in Christ, he is the propitiation for whose sin? For your sin. You can have confidence because all your sin is fully paid by Jesus. Not only can you have confidence, but you don't have to fear. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear because fear involves punishment. And the one who fears is not perfected in love. You know, fear is one of those emotions that inhibits you from doing what God wants you to do. It's an inhibitor. And not only fear, but there's a lot of people now that are very cynical. Do you agree? We are so good at critiquing, analyzing, showing what's wrong. But you know the problem with cynical people? They hide behind fear. And they actually don't do anything. That is not who God called us to be. God says you have to understand who you are. You are loved. You are set free. There is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. You have the capacity to love, to become all that you are. You know, one of the things I asked my kids recently, I said, hey, what is something that dad has taught you that has been helpful? You know what my daughter said? She said, when you taught me that my identity is in who I am in Jesus, that I am God's daughter. I'm not a vo just a volleyball player. I'm not just a student. I'm a child of God. And that's who you are. You know, in 1 John chapter 3, I didn't put it on the screen there, but 1 John chapter 3, verse 1, it says this, See how great a love the Father has bestowed on us, that we would be called children of God. Do you know who you are? If you're in Jesus, you are God's child. You are free. No fear. You can be used by God in the capacity he made you to be used. I liked what J.I. Packer said. I'm going to read the quote with you. He said, again and again, it appears that Christians are not sufficiently in touch with themselves. They do not know themselves well enough to realize that because of the way in which their nature has been changed, their hearts are now set against all known sin. The regenerate heart cannot love what it knows God hates. What's he saying? He's saying when you are born of God, something changes in you. And what you really want in this life, your deepest desire is really to love God and to please him. Satan will like to fool you. And he will say, your deepest desire is to live for yourself. And a lot of us, we believe that. We give so much emphasis on, I'm just a man. I'm, you know, that's my old self. But I want you to know who you are. Confidence in coming to Christ. No fear. Because you are completely loved. Your deepest desire, and you may not even know this, but if you are in Christ, your deepest desire is to love God, to please Him, and to love others. What is the main ministry of this church? Discipleship, right? And that's why there are many things that the church does. It does like marriage retreats, family retreats, sports ministry. So sports ministry is not, it's just one of the many ministries. But there is a sports camp that's coming. And I talk about this because here's a picture of two young people that got married. Asti and Cam's. I was in their wedding in February 9. And both this couple 
serve in the sports ministry. In fact, Asti was baptized in one of the single sports camps that we had. Now what blessed me about this couple is in this same wedding, there's a group of young girls that I was chatting with. And I find out that these five girls, 15, 16 years old, are part of a small group led by camps. And do you know where they met? In a sports camp. So I'm telling you this because there are opportunities for you to love others, get involved in their lives. This couple is investing in these kids. You know what these kids told me? I said, hey, we have a sports camp for 12-year-olds. Can you help? And they all said, we're in. We're going to help. We can also act like a coach, like a mentor in that sports camp. These two boys, they just turned 18 years old. They're, they're twins, Lyle and James. They're elite swimmers, super fast swimmers. They were impacted by the sports camp. They are now starting their own sports camp this year in Zambales. Do you see how when you and I invest our lives, when we live out who we are in Christ, get out of our comfort zone, because we're not limited by fear, and we say, yes, who I am is God, you made me to love you, to, to use my gifts for you. That's who I am. The, the impact is dynamite. I talked to some people after the last service. I'm like, hey, are you part of a small group? They said, no, not yet. I'm like, go to the sports camp. You know, there are two parts to our brain, the left brain and the right brain. And this neuroscientist wrote this book called The Other, the Other Half of Church. And so much of our discipleship is left brain. What you're doing right now, left brain. You're listening to me talk to you about God's word. It's important. Spiritual disciplines, left brain. Memorizing scripture, left brain. But the author, neuroscientist, he says, you know where real change takes place? You know where transformation takes place? On the right side of the brain. And what's that? Relationships, love. How can you feel loved in a church this big? It's very hard. That's why we need each other. I go to my small group because I need them. I need them in my life. You know how unloving I am, how much I need to grow. But when I'm in an environment where I am loved and I can be honest and authentic, we have nothing to prove. Many people, I'm so blessed with Khalil and his wife, Doreen. They talk about their failures. And we need that kind of authenticity if we really want to grow. What's the application? The application. If someone says, I love God and hates his brother, he is what? A liar. For the one who does not love his brother, whom he has seen, cannot love God, whom he has not seen. If you love God, you will love your brother. If you are in God, if you abide in God, you will love. And this command we have from him, that the one who loves God should love his brother also. What's the message today? Love is abiding in God. What's our memory verse? 1 John 4, 19. We love because he first loved us. God is the source of love. We show God's love by loving others. And we, we have the power to do that when we abide, when we stay in God's love. For those of you who are tracking with me, I skipped two verses. I'm going to show it to you now. These two verses. This is John. John lived to be, a, to be one of the oldest apostles. And he wrote this letter in his older age. And this is what he's saying. He's saying, we have seen and testified. He's saying, I have seen. Who have I seen? I have seen that the Father has sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. I have seen this Jesus that I'm talking about with my very own eyes. I am testifying because some of you may be saying, wow, to really love that way? How can I love as, as God loved me? Well, you can't. You really need Jesus in your life. And you may be saying, well, how do I have Jesus come into my life? John tells us. He says, I have seen this Jesus. And then he says, whoever, read this with me. 
whoever confesses that Jesus is the Son of God, God abides in him and he in God. So my question for you today, will you confess Jesus? If you don't have Jesus in your life, you can't do this. We can't love this way. God is love. And to love like God, we need to abide in God. Develop that relationship you have with God. And you need people in your life because we were never meant to just be solo flight. When somebody pulls away, you know something's up. You go after them because God made us for, it, for community and for one another. May you give Jesus your life today. May you invite him. Let's bow our heads and pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you so much that you are love. Lord, it blows our mind that you sent your son Jesus to be the propitiation for our sin. We worship you, God. We give you all the glory and all the honor. We thank you from the bottom of our hearts that you have made a way for us to have a relationship with you. And Lord, maybe there's somebody in this room right now who now all of a sudden your spirit has convicted their heart and they realize, wow, I have sinned against you. I am subject to the wrath of God. And they need you, Jesus. And they want to invite you into their life because they need your forgiveness. And if that's you, I want you to pray with me right now, as honest as you can. Lord Jesus, I have rebelled against you. I have sinned against you. And I humble myself right now and I admit that I need you. So I invite you, Jesus, to come into my life, to be my Lord, to be my master, to be my savior. I confess you, Jesus, as the Lord. Thank you for your promise, God, that if we confess Jesus, then you abide in us, which means all our sin is fully paid. And we have eternal life in you. Father God, I pray for the rest of us that do have a relationship with you. Thank you that you are the source of love. Thank you that it is only through you that we can love others because you have first loved us. So help us, Father, to grow in love, that we would be known by our love, by your love for us and through us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Awesome, awesome. What a beautiful message it is. So love is abiding in God. Now let's take uh, two minutes as the music team would come up here on stage. And uh, there would be, yeah, uh, there's, there's a couple of discussion questions there. Pick only one and discuss it with your seatmate. Okay, cool. Thank you.
Praise God for a wonderful message for all of us and reminder. So may we ask everyone to stand as we sing this last song declaring God's love for us. And let us lift the name of the Lord. For God so loved the world that He gave His only Son whosoever believes will not perish they shall have the eternal life I shall hold to the cross I shall hold to God alone for His love has salvaged me for His love has set me free for God so loved the world as the Lord we thank you God He gave His only Son whosoever believes will not perish they shall
brothers and sisters. It's so nice to see you. And see you next week for our first timers. We would love to meet you at the corner. See you next week. <laughs>